Hey what's up guys, it's Oakley and IGN just released an interview about Total War Warhammer. Now as always, go ahead and check the link in the description below to read the full article. In this video I'll just be going over the highlighted portions that I took out from the interview. To be honest though, I did sort of cut most from the interview because it's not that long. Um, but uh, you know, as always, I'm just here to relay it onto you and give you my impressions. So for the full thing, uncut, go ahead and check the link below. Anyways, they start by sort of priming us to, okay, what is the scope of this project and why is CA presumably going to be, you know, the best ones to deal with this Warhammer license. And they talk about this and first they start talking about how are they going to handle the lore. And they talk about Andy Hall and he's going to be the lead writer for the upcoming Total War Warhammer. And what's cool about this is they said that Andy Hall actually spent 15 years at Games Workshop writing the lore books. So you can imagine if CA is going to be using him as a reference for this game, they really want to weave in the lore into the game. And it's not going to be, you know, two separate studios developing this, one with sort of the lore on one side, kind of relaying through emails, hey, you should probably do this for gameplay, and then CA picks it up. No, it seems like it's very much interwoven. So hopefully for those people like Arch um, and all the, you know, the true fans of the lore, I, I'm sure they'll be lots of little um, sort of hopefully Easter eggs to the Warhammer world um, but for those of us who aren't that in depth to it it'll still feel like a very much living breathing world of Warhammer so I'm very excited for this um, I had no clue that uh, they brought on a guy who had had 15 years of lore experience um, but you know that's awesome they're definitely throwing themselves into this project let's go on to the next one so here they talk about um, the part of the trilogy this is information that we knew before um, and here they just mentioned that it is kind of a jigsaw and what I thought that was interesting that they mentioned here um, that you can play each of them independently yes we knew that and when they, you put them all together what they say here is it's gonna be the largest Total War campaign there's ever been and I was trying to think about this um, because the largest one we've ever seen is Empire and a lot of people like Empire because of its scale because you could start in Europe and you could travel to a different portion of the map you go to the Americas you could go over to India you could do a lot of exploring and it really felt like an awesome you know Empire builder like in the title and so I can only imagine if a game is gonna be larger than that my god that is going to be awesome and especially with the diversity that you hope to get with this series i mean just imagine being the orcs and just starting off on one part of your your terrain and finally you know you build up to the wog you have like high level characters you take out the old world and all of a sudden now the next game drops and you can expand out across the sea over to lusitania or is it Lusitania? No, uh, Lustria, I believe. Sorry, I probably just butchered that. But yeah, where the lizard men are, and you go and explore, and you know, finally you get to the scale of empire, which is going to be super interesting. I wonder how that's going to actually work. No, no. Th okay, this is what I'm thinking. Because just imagine the scenario I set up, where you play a game um, as you know the orcs, and you've gotten to the end of your campaign. Then all of a sudden, a new game rises up. I don't think you'll be able to continue that campaign because then. How would the other factions be positioned? Would they be at square one for technology? I, okay, yeah, actually this is starting to make sense as I speak out loud. <laughs> I assume you're going to have to have all the, the, the jigsaw pieces that they're mentioning here in place and then you have to start a new campaign, which is unfortunate if you've established, you know, a cool empire and you want to uh, then bring those characters that you've devoted into, like, expansion overseas. It, it seems, you know, on the surface that you won't be able to do that, but hey, maybe CA figured out a way where you can port your characters over between... Uh, various um, games. So we'll have to wait and see. This is the first thing that, that comes to mind. But uh, yeah, definitely very promising. Let's go to the next one. So here. Now they start talking about um, why this Total War you know, trilogy is going to be so expansive and why, despite it being only four playable main um, races at the beginning, why that means so much more. And they say because each faction has its own wildly different diversity. And they say, for instance, here, the Empire is going to be the most traditional one. For instance, they collect taxes and they have the organization that we would expect. So call France. And in here, they're going to list the different factions. And they're basically going to say what is sort of one of the main driving factors for them. So for here, they say sort of the, the goal of Karl Franz is to unify the Empire. And that's something we've seen mentioned in trailers, in the pre-battle speeches. So I assume each uh, race is going to have sort of a narrative. And um, each of your characters, your legendary lords in particular, will go ahead and progress that story. So for the Empire, as your Karl Franz, you're going to want to unify um, you know, the various different principalities of the empire and the elector counts and bring them to your side. 
Next, they mention the orcs. So just like um, Call France perhaps wants to unite, the orcs here want to conquer. And so this is going to be the wog that you build up to. And then they talk about, um, this is something we, we mentioned before, that if the orcs, you know, don't have, you know, they, they lose, they, if they start losing momentum, then they'll start fighting each other. The, the sort of a, a compromise system of attrition um, is going to be in effect. And what I thought that was very interesting here at the top, it says the orcs, on the other hand, aren't going to take a human settlement and start policing it or put on some half moon spectacles and start looking at tax receipts. They're orcs. That is very good to hear. And it's awesome for how they're going to be able to differentiate these factions. I thought that the orcs might function kind of like um, the Huns, and it seems like here they're going to definitely embrace the asymmetry of this. So I'd be very interesting, uh, interested to see what they do with the humans. Do they take them slaves? Do they kill some of them? Do they just pillage and burn? Um, it's going to be very interesting to see how these factions play out, and definitely you're going to get a different feel from them. So that's exciting. Let's go on to the next one. Now they talk about the dwarves, so we get a little bit more. And they say the dwarves are all about getting back old glories. So kind of similar to the Empire in the sense that you are called France and you have your, you know, a portion of the, a small portion of the Empire and you want to unite the Empire. Similar type of thing going on with the dwarves um, as they are called, uh, you know, the Doom and now they're in the Age of Reckoning. So basically what they say here is you're going to start to link up the, the disparate outposts of the dwarves. So that is something similar, like I said, to the Carl Franz, uniting your empire. You're going to have to do that with the dwarves, presumably. But uh, your forces are going to be even more separated, it seems like here. Scattered to the winds, different outposts, probably holding out long distances against enemies who are going to be attacking you. And you just have to hold fast in your sieges. Uh, in your cities against countless sieges and just hold tight until you can finally link up, form trade networks, form routes, and then, then you know start building your industry and then expand out from the mountains. So that's a cool different mechanic, different from the Empire who would be, you know, perhaps a little bit more centralized. It seems here that the dwarves are going to be a lot more, you know, bunkered down at first. And then next they mention, slightly mention, I will say, the vampires. And they say they can't talk about that, but they say sort of the driving narrative, the one of the driving... Um, mechanics for the vampires is that they might need a lot of corpses to keep themselves going so that is a super interesting mechanic what that has me thinking is you know the vampires just like the, the just like the orcs who need momentum to keep the wog going perhaps the vampires need to do a lot of raids on settlements or win battles in order to claim victims to then uh resuscitate as you know um the undead to fuel their armies and that is again another interesting mechanic perhaps you can even deal in terms of slavery uh import in prisoners and then convert them to your own purposes so that that, that is another very cool mechanic that uh, man i can't wait to see this and i hope ca doesn't screw up some of these mechanics but man they look promising let's go on to the next point and here they start to play with us a little bit and they mention you know elves and skaven who might perhaps make an appearance you know obviously we knew that the elves and skaven you know you can't do a total war warhammer title without these two um of course they're not going to be in the first title and here if they're already starting to tease at the elves and skaven perhaps that means they're going to be in the next title the next series but yeah that is that is super awesome i can't even begin to imagine what sort of special mechanics they're going to build into those um, perhaps the skaven tied to collecting warp stone to upgrade your technology or perhaps expanding um and undermining other nations with your your tunnel systems a lot of cool stuff um potential in that let's go to the next one uh here so this is um they're continuing on with the explanation of the 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 change in scope and scale of this title and here's what they're saying they're going to be completely revamping the political system now this is obviously something that i think needed to be done with Historical titles, you're a little bit more hampered in the sense that it has to be traditional. Here they want to take the gloves off and they want to just, you know, let loose and try new things. And for instance, here they're saying they're going to do away with dying from old age for your families. So, you know, they said previously that the uh, time doesn't necessarily pass in this Warhammer world and your, your, your agents and your... Um, characters won't die from old age and along with that they said there's going to be no family tree so those are going to be axed again no family tree but in its place they say there are going to be a lot of changes that allow that once once there's the void of the family tree they're going to have a lot of stuff that they put in its place so for example at the top you can see they're going to add over 400 new traits for characters and so instead of having a family tree that you care about um because here's the thing about family tree 
Um, I think the purpose of the family tree is you to be tied to a character and his, obviously, family and his descendants. And that's how when a character dies, you can live on and then, you know, start up a new character who's his inheritor. And that's how you kind of had a, a progressive character and you kind of, you follow the lineage of one guy. Well, when you take away the fact that characters will die with age, well then perhaps there's not as much need for a family tree and you can get that continuity with one character. And instead of having a whole myriad of different characters who can have different traits throughout a family, well then here they're simplifying it. No, you just stick with perhaps one or two or several characters that you develop and now you can have over 400 new traits for these characters. So that that is awesome. I like that they're going to switch it up because it's definitely been feeling a bit stale as of late. Um, and hopefully once they you know nail these character mechanics, and this is the this is the cool thing that I'll mention for them doing history on one side and fantasy on the other. The fantasy realm allows them to try these new things in terms of different political systems. And perhaps if they strike gold in some sort of mechanic in the fantasy world, they can then transfer that over to the next historical title. Whereas in the past, they were sort of tied and chained to the historical um, the rigors of the historical world and they couldn't so much shake it up and try new things and you know see what hits and misses so that's why it's been a little bit stale in the past so this has me excited for two reasons uh, one it'll be awesome for the fantasy title but also it has the, the potential to help out the historical title so that's always a good thing to keep in mind next one um, yeah here this is to carry on about the the level of customization they say here they, they put a, a finite number right? you can get 30 levels of skill trees and deeper customization again this is something that is awesome that I really love to role play with your characters it's something that's been missing in later Total War titles especially with Rome 2 with the with the years blowing by so quickly it just really didn't feel like you get attached to your characters whereas here oh man you get to role play and with characters who some of them can't die it is going to be awesome to live out your campaigns not only the story of your empire but the story of your leaders so that is that's a, a godsend to see it goes all the way up to 30 levels you're no longer tied to you know five or ten levels that's really cool and uh yeah that's going to be it for this article i'm sure there'll be more um to come as they said a little earlier they said they, they teased about the changes to the political system that we're going to hear from them pretty soon so yeah keep an eye out for that and i definitely will relay that on to you hope you guys enjoyed and uh, of course stay tuned for more i will see you in the next one peace out